Hey everyone, welcome to Live Your Language. This is Stephanie, a PhD student in second language acquisition and a mother to a child that I am raising bilingually in my non-native language, French. Today, I'm going to be talking all about a topic that I know a lot of you can relate to, and that is how to choose a language class for your child. Now, when I was thinking about this topic for my child, I quickly became overwhelmed with all the choices out there. There's just so much to choose from, and you just really wonder, what matters and what doesn't. So in order to sort of clear the fog a little bit around this question, I really thought, all right, what is it that this class can offer that I can't offer my child? And there are a few things that really stood out to me. The first and most immediate thing that came to my head was that classes can offer my child access to a native speaker, especially for those of us who are parenting bilingually in our non-native language it's really important to make sure that we get access to a native speaker and classes can really provide that. A class can provide some much needed interaction in some novel settings and it can also encourage the child to speak. Classes are also really fun for just um, effective factors. So making the language fun, making it something that the child will look forward to rather than something that just mommy is pushing on me and would really make mommy happy, classes can provide a fun atmosphere and something exciting and social in that language. I did a video not long ago, and I will link it above, which discussed why it's really important to do your best to replicate the majority language context around you in the minority language. So in that video, I talk about why it's crucial to do your best to try and infuse um, the minority language in your everyday life as much as possible, and not just language, but actually the social aspects of it as well. Classes offer children opportunities to make friends in the minority language, um, and also for parents too. It offers parents an opportunity for community and support, and just a way to really plug into the um, community in the area that speaks that language. And lastly, language classes can also create a need that doesn't exist at home to use that language. So depending on the context, uh, it's often the case that one parent who is speaking the minority language can also speak the majority language and understand it perfectly. Oftentimes, children will pick up on this and realize that this parent can actually understand the majority language and therefore they may stop putting in the effort to speak the minority language with that parent. Classes can change that. They can provide the need that is so crucial to pushing them into production and getting that practice. And along the same lines is that a class can really show students that this language is valued and useful outside of the home. So for a lot of us, you're kind of on an island. Um, the language, the minority language, is only spoken within the four walls of your house, and when you go out there, they hear nothing but the majority language. They may start to think the majority language is important to society, um, to school, to culture, etc. And they may not think that the minority language is very useful or important at all. By attending classes and seeing a bunch of people hopefully speak this language, um, especially somebody like a teacher, they can start to realize that yes, this is a very useful language and this is something that's worth knowing and worth knowing well. So in wading through all the resources and the packages and all the things that are offered out there, I found it important to prioritize a couple things. The first is to prioritize good language models, especially for those of us who are raising children in our non-native language, it's really crucial that they have a native speaker model. The next thing to prioritize is interactive potential. That means prioritizing smaller classes or even one-on-one -on -one access over larger classes. It might be tempting to go for larger classes, um, and there are plenty of things that are offered in larger classes that are very valuable. Just keep in mind that it's gonna be the interactive aspect, not necessarily listening, to stories being read or interacting with other children who don't speak the language very well that are going to help the most. And going along the same lines and perhaps linked to that is opportunities for production. Receptive resources are really great, but you wanna make sure that you're prioritizing production because receptive resources are things that you can provide at home. You can show them TV shows, and listen to music and all those sorts of things, but it's really the production that's gonna push them forward. So it's really something that you should watch out for because some classes out there will offer 
added on recorded videos and those sorts of things as extras to sort of legitimize the cost, but just remember that those are not really um, things that you should consider in the cost. What you're really paying for is the production um, opportunities and the opportunities for speaking and engaging and interacting in that language. The next thing to prioritize is frequency. I would definitely go for spaced opportunities, so something that happens maybe less often but more frequently throughout the week rather than one clump huge uh, class that happens once a month or once every two weeks. I know that a lot of times this is impractical. I know a lot of us have to travel pretty far to go um, a couple towns over to find these opportunities. But as far as language learning goes, it's very useful to have smaller chunks of language learning opportunities more frequently throughout the week. And the last thing to prioritize is authentic interactions. A lot of us will have to choose between authentic interactions and something that's designed for children who are non-native speakers of this language. So authentic interactions might be something like the interactions they might have with an au pair or a babysitter or a foreign exchange student who speaks that language versus the interactions that you might find in a class that's designed for students who don't speak the language or who speak it very poorly. So if ever given the opportunity and it's feasible, I would encourage and prefer authentic interactions. So to summarize, you are looking for good models, opportunities for interaction, opportunities for language production, frequency of the interaction, and authentic interactions. Okay, so that's what I have for you today regarding how to choose a class or a resource for helping support your child's bilingual language development. I know it can be really overwhelming to navigate through all the different resources out there, but by keeping in mind just a couple key things to prioritize when you're doing your own search, you can make sure that whatever you choose works best for you and that you're getting the best bang for your buck. If there's anything here that I left out or any questions that you have, please feel free to put them in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.